So we're here at the Nordic Semiconductor and uh, who are you? So I'm Svein Egen Nilsen, I'm the CTO of Nordic Semiconductor. I'm responsible for R&D activities. So uh, Nordic Semiconductor, I, I always find Nordic Semiconductor in all kinds of smartwatches, trackers, you, you have a lot of market already. Yeah, so if you go around this, uh, the whole show floor here at the Sands, you will find a lot, a lot of our customers, right? And uh, I think in the terms of the wearable space, particularly for our Bluetooth smart devices, They've been extremely successful in that segment. Let's go just over there. So there's a uh, whole bunch of examples. So uh, we have our uh, we have our Hall of Fame here, and um, you know this is a whole different slew of, of different products: wearables, watches, old gaming stuff, watches again, wireless, rings, rings, pens. Wireless charging things, and maybe in the bottom level here you will find more in the you know the area of smart home, you know, the smart home type of products. And right behind me, what are we looking at there? Right behind me, you will see that you have our wall of fame of all the module makers that support uh, our products or have built modules around our products. And this list just keep growing more and more. And so you need a bigger wall. I don't know, yeah, maybe two walls. This is actually pretty amazing, that's for sure. That's uh, very special. So what do, what, how, do, what is it, how is it possible for so many to make modules with your chips? I, you make modules for the, with, the, with the IC vendor that has customers, I would guess, right? So I think it goes testament to, uh, to the amount of customers we have. And you know, to show some of the customer breath, what you see all the way in the bottom level, just yeah. all the way around, is beacons made by Nordic Semiconductor. Just beacons? Just beacons. Yeah. So if you have a chance to get around... Uh, does that mean, does that mean you're the leader in beacons in the world? Yeah, I actually don't know anyone who does more beacons than we do. I mean, we have probably 20, 30 partnerships. Big companies like Contact, I.O., Eskimote, and they're pretty much all our customers. What, what is the demo you have here? Oh, yeah, I'll, um, so what we're showing here, Gene, can you show the demo very quickly? Like the, the, this work. chocolate, in our home kit chocolate detection. Uh, oh, what is that chocolate detection? No, what it actually is. This is a demo of Apple HomeKit, which we have supported in our SDK. So it means Apple has come out with HomeKit as a way of their smart home uh, products. We have support for them on our ICs and uh, built in SDK. What we're just showing here has closing and locking doors and uh, and how it works. So it's a uh, it's not really a nothing but a solid protocol that we have implemented. And uh, the Nordic Developer Zone. Does that mean there's a lot of developers on Nordic stuff? Yeah, we, we have a dev zone on our website where people can come and post questions and have answers. A lot of those answers are then answered by the community. Some are answered by us. Up to now, we launched this two years ago. Now we have 10,000 questions being answered. There's an open forum of questions and answers. We think that's the best way of supporting customers. Much breadth of information as we can possibly do. That's what the dev zone is all about. So you the CTO? Yes. So there's uh, Nordic is doing ARM Cortex M0, ARM Cortex M4F, yes. right? Yes. And. Uh, how do you decide where to go, what to do? I mean, we, le we just launched, launched the NRF52832, which is the first true Bluetooth low energy device running a Cortex M4 with DSP functionality and float, 64 megahertz, 200 core marks. It screams power, right? Screams power, Bluetooth low energy. What is that for? It's for all, you know, everyone want to do as much compute at the edge. Sensor makers here, variables, they want to analyze their data, they want to run harder algorithms, they just want more horsepower. So, you know, it seems to me like you give them compute power, it will be consumed. And that's the great thing about it. Showed you HomeKit here, for instance, very sophisticated uh, encryption algorithms involved. You, you really need to have the horsepower to do that. And I think if you move forward, all the talk about IoT, what kind of security you're going to build in, it's all going to be compute heavy. I mean, the Cortex M4 is beautiful inside our device. It's beautiful, the Cortex M4, but why are you doing an M4? Uh, so M4 is it's kind of like bigger than M0, right? Oh yeah, it's a lot. No, in terms of size, it's somewhat bigger, but it's just a whole different animal in terms of performance, right? We also increase the clocking from 16 to 64 megahertz. There's more than 4x compute power. But I think things like the DSP functionality we get in the float functionality in an M4, very valuable for sensors, um, you know, in a, in a breadth of sensors. There's a, there's a lot of devices that basically, they just have a kind of like a Bluetooth chip. So that means they would be able to do much more now. All yeah. those tiny things. 
you, you might submit some of our customers do two chip solutions, right? They had an NRF51, which is M0 based, and they had some other microcontroller to do some more heavy computation. Now, if we see those being able to integrate everything into one single chip, so your system becomes just a single SOC. Nice. Is this ready? Shipping? Yes, uh, we're ready. It's ready, so uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out in 2016 with this. So this, the fun thing is this, and I, I sit now in the I don't see what's going on, but I came here to see yes, and I talked with all these customers, says, yeah, we got your kids in June and through the fall, and now they're all ready to go into production very soon. And that is faster than I ever heard about. It's just an enormous amount of interest for this device. That means, what does that mean? Does that mean a bunch of engineers don't sleep much? I don't know in what the industry. It is. Well, I think it is because they've shown that it's very easy to migrate from our existing device, the 51, to the 52. So you can actually pretty much take your existing code base, recompile, and go again. That's, that means the engineers can still sleep, right? So uh, do you do all this uh, R&D in Norway? Or where does so happen? today we have five R&D offices. Two in Norway, Oslo and Trondheim. Two in Finland, in Oulu and Turku. And one office in Krakow, Poland. So we're all up there in the north, dark areas. But we have uh, around the offices today in five offices. Does that mean uh, you're doing the coolest technologies of those countries? I think we are. Like, uh, this is pretty cool stuff, right? And, yes, uh, it is. Is there any numbers in how many millions or billions of chips you sell? We manufacture more than 700,000 devices per day. 700,000 per day? So you guess last year was something in the order of 250 million devices. So and this is just 2016. What's going to come in, in, in the rest of the year and next years? You know, if I start talking about this, I'll get uh, you know. You don't have to say the, the secrets, stock market but, uh, on us, but you know, you know in general, it, it keeps growing, right? And uh, yeah, the number just keeps growing. But oh, even today, in, in 2015, you know, our manufacturing rate is pretty high, and um, I think we have been successful in reaching really high volumes.